Hey there, it's Kat, and this is Brews and Reviews. So today I'm going to be doing the School Days book tag. This was created by Victoria from What Victoria Read, and I'm just going to get to it. These questions are based around times of day in the school, and then different subjects that you can sort of pick and choose from the options she's given. So I really like the way this is set up and we're going to get straight into the tag. So we'll start off with the six time of day questions and then we'll move on to the subject. So question number one is first bell. Tell us about the book that first got you into reading. So for this one I'm going to go for The Weird Stone of Brisingerman by Alan Garner, which is a mouthful to say. <laughs> Even after all these years, you'd think I'd be able to say it without going blah, 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 blah. but no, this took me a number of tries and now I'm telling you all about it even though I've cut out the attempt. Oh well. So this is a middle grade book about a brother and sister who I think they go to visit their aunt and uncle and they're staying on a farm near Orderly Edge Forest which is just just an old forest in Cheshire which is, I'm from Cheshire, I live vaguely near Orderly Edge Forest so I could visit this as a child so I had some relation to it and I was like oh my god I can go to the places and find the things and I was very excited about that. What an imagination I had, I can say that at least. So they go on an adventure into the woods and there's like a witch or like is it the morrigan or something like that there's like uh, an evil being and it's goblins and there's a wizard that they have to wake from a slumber and it's it's just all very exciting and i was looking for something that i could sort of relate to my uncle recommended it and i was like yes i love it and even to this day when i go and visit that forest i'm like oh look it's the elven path and I I'm such a nerd. I'm such a nerd. The next question is break time. Which book have you most recently had to take a break from or DNF? So the last book that I DNF'd was in December and that was The Ice Maiden by B.D. Smith. This book was a thriller that was about people being murdered in the style of Viking executions but honestly I didn't get that far. I got to the first murder and I just did not care at all what was happening. There was a lot of telling me about all of these different things like the main detective guy had like a troubled past where his son had died but like all that was happening was them saying his son died this long ago <laughs> oh no but all that was happening was like them go oh his son died this long ago and then the wife left and then this happened and then that happened and i was like i just i just don't care i really could not get through it and i, I didn't care what was happening to any of them the murder wasn't even that interesting i just couldn't get through it so I just DNF'd it. Excuse you, why are you falling? But could you just pretend you're standing up? Okay. Oh, what? Netflix? Why is Netflix opened? I don't want Netflix. Wow, <laughs> this video is a mess. Next up we have lunchtime. Tell us about your favourite book that features food. Why is it whenever I need to talk about a book that features food, all food empties from my brain. I'm like, oh, what is food? What book talks about food? Do I just not notice food when it's in a book? Like, I notice it when it's in films and stuff. Like, anytime I watch anime, I'm like, very hungry now. Even though I don't eat most of the things that they're cooking because I'm a vegetarian, but like, whatever. Anyway, back to the question. The only book that I could think of for this question was Kitchen Princess, which is a manga about a girl who cooks. I think it was about a girl who goes to a school where everybody's really good at something and the thing that she is really good at is cooking. That's all I remember about it. She does a lot of cooking. And there were like little recipes in the, the corner of the pages which I thought was really cute. Not that I ever tried to make any of the things but anyway, <laughs> that's my answer. Final bell. Which book have you most recently finished reading? So the answer to this question is Fire Study by Maria V. Schneider. This is the third book in the Poison Study trilogy of the Chronicles of Ixia. And I think it's like the conclusion of Yelena's story, though I think she comes back into it later on in the series. Uh, this book started off really kind of dull, which is bad to say considering there's like a genocide in the first 200 pages and it just wasn't interestingly done. There's a lot of people walking from one place to another and not really getting anywhere. Like, the story doesn't progress even though the characters have literally walked around the country at that point in time. After that 200 pages, I think it gets really interesting. Uh, my favourite characters come back into it. There's more of, like, Yelena and Valak's relationship, which I really enjoyed. And, uh, yeah, I like the end by the end of it. So I did think it was a good conclusion to this trilogy. I just wish the first 200 pages had been better. Homework. What was the last non-fiction book that you read and enjoyed? Oh, uh, I don't remember. 
Is that really bad? I really don't read nonfiction very much. I definitely read one last year because I had it in my if you've got it read it challenge but I just can't remember what it is so I can't have enjoyed it that much. Staff Room, tell us about a book that you go to when you need to take a breath. For this one I'm going to talk about Ink Exchange by Melissa Marr. It's Faye, it's the Dark Court, it's it's YA and I, like I just love it. I shouldn't, it's, it's not particularly healthy at all uh, but I just really like it and I find that I can sort of escape into it. So now we're moving into the subject questions and I answered most of them so we're just gonna get to it or else we'll be here forever. English, tell us about one book you studied at school and recommend one book that you'd like to add to the curriculum. Okay, um, I, don't, I don't really read that many books that I'd go, oh yeah, add this to the curriculum because I don't know. What people study is, is confusing anyway. So I'll tell you about one that I didn't like and one that I did like and we'll, we'll just do it like that. So a book that I didn't like that I studied was The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. As you may know, I am autistic. This book is about an autistic main character. And I don't believe that the author of this book did that much research on autistic people before he actually wrote this book. And I, I just really didn't enjoy it at all. So moving away from that and talking about a book that I did really enjoy, Macbeth by William Shakespeare. I don't know, I just really enjoyed this book. There's a lot that I really like about this play, but I think one of the key things is the decline in mental health on behalf of Macbeth and Lady Macbeth as the play goes on, as they are starting to suffer the repercussions for their actions. And I don't want to say anything more because I feel like most people already know about Macbeth, and if you don't, I don't want to spoil it for you. It's very short. Read it, watch it, enjoy the Shakespeare. Maths, how do you rate your books? So I actually rate my books just according to Goodreads. I don't really use half stars. I rate things one to five stars if I finish them. If I DNF a book, I will not rate it, but I will review it. I don't think I could give a star rating to something that I haven't actively finished, but I also want people to know why I decided not to finish it, so I tend to rate those things there. Um, if it's one star, then it's fucking terrible. It, it's such a bad book. Two stars have something that made me go, oh, well, it wasn't the worst thing I've ever read, but it was still really bad. Three stars, okay, pretty good, all right, nothing special. Four stars, I'm really starting to like this, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting, it's really great, but it didn't quite have enough to make it into my top books. Five stars, I absolutely love it. I can't stop thinking about it. I want to read it again. There's a lot of good things about five stars and yeah, that's my rating system. Geography. Describe a book that has a strong sense of place or great world building. Now, there are a lot of books that I could have picked for this and please don't hate me for picking this again because I always pick it. I know, I know I'm terrible, but it's Legend by David Gemmell. And if you've read this book, you'll understand why. There's something so visual about David Gemmell's descriptions and Legend is a book that takes place in a fault and you're defending this fort and the location in the fort is extremely important to how this battle is going to everyone's mental health and it plays a huge part in the story. So this fort has six walls. It's the only pass into another kingdom and there is an invading force coming from it. Now the walls each have names and they mean different things and I believe one of them's despair, one of them's like strength or something, um, one of them's like death and they like different sized walls and they almost have characters of their own and I'm like, I love it. And I, I just really need to read this book because like thinking about it, I can visually recognize what Dross Delnock looks like. And I'm like, I just need to reread this fantastic book again. P, show us the biggest book on your TBR. It, it's The Stand by Stephen King. Look at this chunky boy. Look at it. It's huge. It's Huge. How many pages is it? I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see. It is... Oh god, these Bible pages. This is what I mean about big books and my tiny little child hands. So there's 1,320 pages. Huge. This book is absolutely massive. I don't even know what it's about. I think it's a post-apocalyptic novel, but I've heard really good things about it and I really want to watch the adaptation that's being done. I think it's on Amazon Prime. Anyway, this is The Chunky Boy. Music. Which format do you think has the best rhythm for reading? And this is quite a hard question for me because it really depends on what mood I'm in. So I often find that audiobooks are really great for when I'm in the mood to multitask. I really like multitasking because my brain moves really quickly a lot of the time. So I listen to my audiobooks on like three times plus speed. So I feel like that has a really good rhythm for when I'm multitasking. But if I'm in the mood to just sort of sit, chill, 
relax myself, then it's physical reading. And then lastly on that list would be ebook reading, because I find that hardest to get into. And I think it's just because it's on a screen. It's just harder to read than all of the other methods of reading for me, so yeah. Art. Show us three books that you think have the best covers. And um, okay, so I could have picked my special editions for any of the books that I really love, but I decided not to because, I mean, you can see them behind me, they're lovely, they're gorgeous, but I decided to pick some paperbacks because I think they get less love out there. So we have this cover of The Mortal Engines by Philip Reeve. I just, like, it's so pretty, it's so gorgeous, I love the structure here and I just think it's so, so well done. I really like an illustrative style, which I think you'll see at least in the next book that I'm going to hold up, which is The Gutter Prayer by Gareth Hanrahan. I just think this is so pretty. I love the colour blue that is in this. I just, it's such a nice colour. And I just think the art is really cool. I like how there's more things in there. The more you look at the image on the cover, the more you see. And I just think it's a really nicely done image. And lastly, we have Once and Future by Amy Rose Carpetta and Corey McCarthy. I just look at the pink and how it's shiny in some places, but like, matte in others. I just think it's really pretty. I'm really drawn to this aesthetic. Yeah. And the last question that I'm going to answer is modern foreign languages. Recommend a translated book that you enjoyed. So I'm going to recommend to you guys The Unit by Nini Holmquist. This is... oh... <laughs> it's a dystopian book which you may not want to read in the present climate just because there's a lot of like death and morbid stuff that happens in here. It's basically about a world in which once you get to a certain age and if you're childless then you basically go to live in this place called the unit where you're experimented on for science and the betterment of humanity until you die. It sounds cheery, I know. So cheery. This book totally didn't leave me like at the end. But it was one of these books that I just couldn't stop thinking about and it was like, oh, uh, oh, uh, that's horrible, but also, I, do, I don't know, I still think about it to this day, and I just still don't know what I think about it. I probably should reread this one because it did make me think a lot. And if you want a book that will make you think, and maybe a little bit depressed, try this. Really sold that book to you, I know. Um, yeah, so those are the last books. That I'm going to talk about. I'm going to tag some people because I actually remembered to tag some people to do this. I'm going to tag Faye from Mystery Date with a Book, Emily from Novel Novels, and Kayla from Crack into a Good Book. So if you guys want to do this tag, do this tag. If you don't, still tagged anyway and you can just pretend you didn't see this. If you don't feel like leaving a comment, leave an emoji, let me know you're still here, but if you like this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!